Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to be making a fun slimline shaker birthday card using a brand new stamp set from Trinity Stamps. This is part of their Sweet Summer Celebration fourth birthday release. Look how large this stamp set is. It's super large, perfect for a slimline card. And it has all of these dogs in a line. Super cute. So just to give you an idea of the size of this this one stamp because these dogs are all connected in this one stamp. So it is about eight inches wide. So it is perfect for a slimline card. And then there's all of these other stamps included in this stamp set. Some of the sentiments are you're positively amazing. It's time to potty. We wish you a yappy birthday. And then you have these balloons and party hats and the strings for the balloons. There's even some confetti there. And if you want to pick up the coordinating dies, they do have coordinating dies available for this set as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my dog image. I'm using some Bristol Smooth cardstock to stamp this on. I'm going to go ahead and take off all of these party hats because of course these dogs need to have some party hats. There's also a cupcake there and then the balloons. And I'm going to stamp this onto the Bristol Smooth cardstock because I'm going to be doing some coloring with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens which are watercolor pens and that's the cardstock that I use the Bristol Smooth when I watercolor. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this down. I'm going to be using my Versa Fine Onyx Black ink. It gives me a really nice black impression. So I'll go ahead and stamp this down and then I'm going to start coloring up this stamp set. I'm going to be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens to color up all of these images. And in addition to the colored pens, I'm going to be bringing in my blender pen to blend the colors out. If you don't have a blender pen, you can always use a paintbrush with water or you can use a water brush to blend the colors. But when you see me come in with this particular marker here with the white on the end, that is the blender. And its purpose is just to blend the colors and it works just like a water brush but without water. I will include a list of marker colors that I use down in the description box of this YouTube video as well as on my blog post. If you're interested in replicating any of these colors, do check that out. I will also have supplies listed in both places as well. So if you're interested in any of these products, you can check those links down in the description box and on my blog for that as well. I'm going to go ahead and set this to music and if you want to watch the coloring, feel free to do so. And if not, you can fast forward to timestamp. 7 minutes and 22 seconds.
ahead and snip away the inside dies so that I can die cut these dogs, the balloons, the party hats. And I'm also going to take these dies right here and die cut some black cardstock so I have some strings for the balloons. Since I'm making a slimline card, I am going to be using the Slimline Card Series Stitched Card Panels and Windows Die Set from Trinity Stamps. And since I'm making a shaker card, I'm going to be using the largest stitched rectangle and the third largest stitched rectangle, and I'm going to layer them together. You can see how I put the smaller one inside the larger one. I'm going to be creating a frame, so I go ahead and die cut that. And I'm not using the inside piece, I'm actually using the frame that cut out on the outside. So the inside piece I can save for another project. I just need that frame. Now I'm going to take those dies apart and just use the largest die to die cut a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. And this piece is going to be for the background of my card. So I'm going to be doing some ink blending with some Distress Oxide inks. I will be using the Salty Ocean as well as the Tumbled Glass. I'm going to start out by just adding some of the Tumbled Glass, which is my lighter blue ink all over that card panel and once I have the tumbled glass ink on the card panel I will go ahead and add some of the salty ocean and that salty ocean I'm just going to be putting around the edges and once I get that darker color around the edges, I'm going to come back in with the tumbled glass and I'm just going to smooth that color out. I'm trying to make a sky and I wanted a blue sky, so those are the colors that I chose. Next, I'm going to use the Great Outdoors Borders and Builders die set from Trinity Stamps. It has fe a fence, it has some trees, there are some hillside borders. So there's all there's some grass, there's all kinds of different borders that you can use to make fun scene cards. I'm going to be using the grass and I'm going to start out with this white cardstock and I'm going to die cut the grass. You can see that fun grass edge. So now I'm going to ink up my grass using some more Distress Oxide ink. I'm going to start with the uh, Twisted Citron. That's going to be my lightest color green and I'm going to apply that all over this grass. And then I'm going to come in with my Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to go over the edges of the grass just to add some definition and just some more interest to this grass area just by using the different colors. So I'm adding some to the top, some to the sides, and then I'm actually going to take that blending tool and I'm just going to press down lightly all over the top of that grass just to add some more uh, texture and definition to the top of the grass. Okay, so I'm going to cut this panel down so that it's about a half inch tall. So I'm just putting it in my paper trimmer to a half inch and I'm going to trim this down. And to add some more texture and interest, I'm going to squeeze some white acrylic paint onto my mat there, and I'm gonna spritz it with water. I'm gonna mix it up really well, and then I'm gonna flick it on those backgrounds. So you can see I'm just trying to mix it up really well, just so that it's not too thick, otherwise I won't be able to get a good um, texture to this paint in order to flick it onto the background. So you can see I'm just flicking it with a paintbrush, adding some more texture and definition to it, and I'm going to do the same thing to that grass border. I will have to use my heat tool to dry this since I plan on using both of these backgrounds immediately. If you aren't going to use it immediately, you can just set it aside and it can dry on its own, or you can use a heat tool like I am just to speed up the drying process. Next, I'm going to add a sentiment, so I'm going to pop the panel in my Misty. I do have that white border that I die cut out just over top of that blue panel, just because I need to see how far down I need to put my stamp. Once I have it where I want it, I just remove that frame, and I go ahead and stamp down. It's time to potty. <laughs> it's such a cute sentiment. So I just stamp that out in some black ink, and now I'm ready to start building my shaker. So I'm going to take this frame that I die cut out of those two stitched rectangle slimline dies. I'm going to put glue on the back side and I'm going to add this to a piece of acetate. After I add it to the acetate, I just use my scissors to trim off the excess acetate on all four sides. 
And then I'm going to use some foam strips and I'm going to add them to the back of my acetate frame. I am using some foam strips from scrapbook.com. These are pretty thin, so I'm using two foam strips side by side. So I put two on the ends and then I'm going to put a set of two along the bottom and the top. You wanna make sure that the foam is touching the left side and the right side. So when you add it across the top and across the bottom, make sure that that foam is touching the left and right side. You don't wanna have any gaps in your foam. If you do, the shaker pieces will fall out. And I want to add some height to this, so I am going to add another set of two foam strips right on top of the previous ones. Because again, I want to add some height to make sure that all of my shaker bits, once they're added inside, they have plenty of room to move around inside of this frame. Next, I'm going to turn that frame over and I'm just laying my dog images on top. I want to kind of see how far down I need to add another piece of foam because if I just add shaker bits inside of this panel right now, what's gonna happen is all those shaker bits will fall to the bottom and you won't really be able to see them because all of those dogs will be covering up all of the shaker bits when they are sitting at the bottom. So I'm adding another piece of foam tape just across the uh, bottom here of, this is actually the bottom, I have it upside down. And I'm adding another piece of foam tape across the bottom of my frame so it's probably maybe about a half inch from the bottom of the actual frame and once I put these dogs right on top what will happen is the shaker bits will not go past that top layer of foam you, um, but it just saves me from having to use so many shaker bits because I wanted them to actually really be seen and I don't want them to get lost at the bottom of those dogs. So here I'm using several of the new embellishment mixes from Trinity Stamps. These are clay embellishment mixes. I'm using the red, which is the Cheery Cherry. The orange is the Soda Pop. So I'm just laying them there on my background panel. I have the yellow, which is ripe banana. And I'm also using the green, which is green apple. So this is a mix of sprinkles as well as some round clay embellishments. The blue is the blueberry, and you can see the different tones of the different colors. So you have light blue and dark blue, the light green and the darker green. The white is marshmallow fluff. So I'm just adding a few of the white there. And again, notice that all of my embellishments are towards the top of that panel because remember, I want them above that foam piece. So next, I'm going to remove the backing off of the foam. Once I have all of that backing off of there, I'll be able to adhere this panel right to the top of that background. And I always like to add another layer of glue right on top of that foam. Even though it is sticky, that foam, I always like to add another layer of glue just for extra security. So now I'm ready to go ahead and add that frame right to the top of my slimline card panel. So here you can see a visual of how that extra row of foam, it actually stops those embellishment mixes from going all the way to the bottom of that panel. So now I'm ready to add my stamps right to the top of the acetate. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the grass. I'm just lining everything up here. I'm gonna have the grass all the way at the bottom of the acetate. The dogs will be behind the grass. And now I'm just positioning all of those hats and the balloons exactly where I want them before I start gluing them down. So I'm going to go ahead and add the grass to the front of those dogs. So I'm gonna apply glue on the back of the grass and apply it directly to the front of those dogs. Once I have that added, I'm gonna go ahead and snip off the excess grass on the right-hand side. And before I add the dogs directly to the acetate, I'm gonna go ahead and add those balloon strings behind those dogs. So I added glue to the front of that black string and I attached it to the back of the dog. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I add glue to the front and then attach it to the back of that dog stamp. So you can see those strings are attached to the actual dogs where I want those balloons to appear. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add glue behind that entire stamped image and add it to the front of the acetate on my card panel. 
Okay, I'm just using an acrylic block to hold that down, and then once that's fully secured to that acetate, I'm going to go ahead and add the last two balloons. So I have the blue one and the red one. And then I'm going to start adding all of those party hats to the dog's heads. Next, I'll add that panel to a slimline card base that measures eight and a half by three and a half inches. So I just took a piece of eight and a half by seven white card stock and scored it at three and a half inches on the seven inch side. And that's going to fit perfectly on the front of that card base. And I forgot to add the cupcake to the center of the card. I wanted to add it to the center dog. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'll add that little cupcake there, right in the middle. And that's gonna complete my slimline shaker card. So I would love to hear what you think of this card. If you are interested in any of the products used today, check out the links in the description box below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.